The Lord of the Rings makes its triumphant return to Games Workshop in a new edition and a new box set. In this set we have a brand new rendition of Theoden King of Rohan and in this video I'll be showing you how you can go about painting the mounted horse lord using Citadel paints. Before we can begin painting, we first of all need to prime. I like to use a grey primer for this task as it works as a good base coat to build upon for both lighter and darker colours. You can use any grey primer, but I used a mixture of Vallejo's black and grey airbrush primers. I've also partly assembled the miniature and have attached some of the smaller components to some lengths of wire. Keeping these components separate makes painting those tricky areas much easier. The first step in painting Theoden is to tackle some of the leather horse armour, and for this we'll be using dryad bark. However, before applying the paint, we first of all want to water it down slightly. Thinning out the paint will not only make it easy to work with, but if we apply a couple of thin coats, we'll be left with a much smoother finish. So take your paint and mix it with an equal amount of water. The areas to paint using this dryad bark mixture are the horse's leather armour, the wood on the rear of the shield, Theoden's gloves and finally the horse's hooves. Continuing with the base coats, our next paint will be Rhinox Hide and this will be used to base coat Theoden's armour, his shield, saddle and finally the trim on his horse's armour. To paint the small leather squares behind the saddle, the horse's reins and Theoden's hair, we'll be using a base coat of Steel Legion Drab. To paint the red areas of the miniature, we'll be using Corn Red to give us that deep red colouring. The parts to paint include the undershirt, the sword's grip and also the leather straps around Theoden's waist. For the green cloth beneath the scale armour, we'll be using War Flesh. Remember to be careful and not to overspill onto the leather armour during this step. Theoden's horse is white, but painting him so would make it look unnaturally bright. So instead we'll be using a base coat of Celestra Grey. It's light enough to appear like an off-white, but still just about dark enough to maintain slightly more realism. Continuing with the horse, we next want to paint its mane and its tail. Again, these areas are a very pale colour, so we'll be using Rakar Flesh. This will result in a warm white colour that is easily differentiated against the rest of the horse. To paint the bare skin on Theoden's face, we'll be using a base coat of Bugman's Glow. Don't worry if you paint over the hair that we painted earlier, as you can also touch this up afterwards. Next up we have our metallic paints, and we'll be starting things off by painting the silver metallic areas using Lead Belcher. These areas are quite numerous and include the sword's blade, stirrups, the chanfron on the horse's head and finally the scaled armour. To paint the gold areas, we'll be using Retributor Armour. The areas we wish to tackle are the sword's hilt, the banding on the shield, the metal fastenings of the belt and the scabbard, the triangular pattern on the scale armour, and finally the inlaid gold detailing on Theoden's armour. For this final area, once you've completed painting the inlaid areas, you will probably need to touch some of these raised areas using Rhinox Hide. Just make sure you clean your brush and water of any metal flakes before you do so. With all of our base coats completed, we can now start to add some definition. For this, I'll be applying several washes, the first of which will be Agrax Earthshade. However, before you go applying it straight to the miniature, you'll first want to slightly thin it out using some Lamium Medium. For this mixture, I would suggest two parts wash to one part Lamium Medium. This will reduce its strength slightly and prevent it from being too overpowering. Apply this wash to all the leather and gold areas, as well as the horse's hooves. You will find that this wash will flow into the recesses, helping to create shading and depth. The next wash that we will be using will be Seraphim Sepia, and you'll want to apply this wash over any hair on the miniature, both the horses and Theodens. Don't forget to mix in some Lamium Medium with this either. The final wash to apply is one of Non Oil, and this time we will be targeting the areas that we painted with Lead Belcher earlier on. In addition to this, I will also be applying some targeted washes of very thin Non Oil to the recessed areas of the horse's hide. With our washes completed for now, we can now move on to painting some edge highlights. For the first of these, we will be using Gawthor Brown to paint any areas that we painted using Dryad Bark. To edge highlight, use a small brush with only a little paint and carefully drag your brush along the edges. This will create a thin, lighter coloured line along the edge, which will help to make those details really stand out. 
Next, we want to use Dubal Brown as a highlight to anywhere that we painted using Rhinox Hide. For the areas base coated with Steel Legion Drab, you will want to use Bane Blade Brown as your edge highlight. The horse's mane and tail hairs can be carefully picked out using Deep Kin Flesh. For the slightly more prominent features of the horse, you can use White Scar to paint a thin white line along them. If you're struggling to get that thin line, mix in a little water to smooth out the flow of the paint. Theoden's red undershirt and belt can then be highlighted with a thin line of Tuscore fur. The paint that we'll be using to highlight the metallic parts of the miniature is Stormhost Silver, and we'll be applying this to both the areas we painted using Lead Belcher and also Retributor Armor. With the highlights completed, the next step is to paint Theoden's face. At the moment, he's looking a little sunburned, but we can fix this with some Lamian Medium and Kiss and Flesh mixed together in equal parts, much like our earlier washes. Apply your mixture to the more prominent facial features such as the forehead, nose and cheeks, leaving the darker Bugman's glow visible in the recesses. After the first coat has dried, apply a second layer, but instead only focus on the harshest facial features like the bridge of the nose, brow and cheekbones. This layering technique combined with the Lamium medium thinning will help to create a smoother and much more realistic looking transition between the darker Bugman's glow and the lighter Kislev flesh. The next couple of steps are optional, but they will add some extra details to Theoden's face and hair, which will serve as a focal point to this miniature. First of all, we want to enhance the facial features by applying a wash of Lamia Medium Thinned Reichlin Flesh Shade. This will flow into the recesses and help to bring out those details, as well as smoothing out the transitions between the Bogman's Glow and the Kisser Flesh we applied in the previous step. Finally, an extreme highlight of a Shabti Bone can be applied to the top and the tips of Theoden's hair to give it the effect that the light is shining on it and has created some slight colour variation. And here we have the completed Theoden on horseback. I finished things off by creating a simple basing scheme using textured paints and varnishing the components before finally assembling them. You can find a full list of all the paints that I've used in this tutorial in the description below, along with any other equipment that I've used to create this video, such as my everlasting wet palette. If you enjoyed this video, do let me know in the comments below, and if you haven't done so already, be sure to check out my Patreon page if you would like to support me in making these videos. If you have any questions or would just like to chat with others who enjoy my channel, I've set up a Discord server, which you can find a link to in the description below. So the only thing left to say is, thanks for watching, and goodbye.